Hello from National Geographic Education. My name is Gina Borgia, and this is Explorer Classroom. Many of our viewers are celebrating Yom Kippur today, and all of us at National Geographic wish you a Yom Tov. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Explorer Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and time for your questions. National Geographic has partnered with Ocean Exploration Trust for three expeditions in the Hawaiian Islands aboard Ocean Exploration Trust ship, the exploration vessel Nautilus. I'm so glad you are joining us today for the second event in a four event special series that will be broadcasting live from the ship. Today, we are joined by members of the shark team. Our guests are explorer Ariana Santos Agustinez, educators Kelly Kohler and Daniel Kinzer, and researcher Sarah Khalid, storyteller Jenny Berglund. Their team is researching shark diversity and abundance around Maui and Hawaii Islands to learn how they might inform conservation efforts in the area. They use non-invasive research techniques like baited remote underwater video systems and an artificial intelligence image recognition tool to conduct their research. Today, they are going to share an update from the expedition and tell us all about Hawaii's sharks. But before we get into today's lesson, I'd like to welcome our registered guests who join us from around the globe. Special shout outs for today go to the Racine Unified School District in Wisconsin. They have 2000 students joining us today. Hi everyone, a big welcome from Explorer Classroom. Hello also to Koalinga Middle School in California, to Parkway Northeast in Missouri, St. Bruno in Toronto, Canada, the Cool School in Greenfield, Canada, and to all of our homeschools out there. We are so thrilled to have you here. And with that, let's get this Explorer Classroom started. It's time to turn it over to the Shark team to share all about their expedition. Take it away, team. Hello. Thank you everybody for tuning in. It's so wonderful to see all of your faces. Um, I just wanna quickly introduce, I'm Ariana Agostinas. I am the scientist for the Shark Research Project on board the Exploration Vessel Nautilus. Um, team members here, Jenny and Daniel as well. And behind the scenes, Megan, who has been helping facilitate all of our ship to shore interactions, who has been so fabulous in getting everything rolling and connecting with you all wonderful kids. Um, and so, on board this expedition, we have been here for about three weeks now, um, conducting shark research in Hawaii Island um, using what Gina had mentioned, the baited remote underwater video systems. Um, and I can go down to the ROV hangar very quickly to show you um, what it is uh, and how we use it to study the sharks here in Hawaii Island. So I will excuse myself briefly and take you down to the ROV hangar. So while she's heading down there, should we introduce ourselves? Yeah, go for it. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see all these amazing faces. Um, who out there is uh, wants to be an explorer? Raise your hand. Oh, yeah. I see lots of hands out there. That's great. Well, hopefully, we'll be able to show you some different ways for being an explorer today. So... Uh I love it. I'm Daniel Kinzer, everyone. It's great to be here with all of you. So exciting to be on board the Nautilus, where we've been studying the sharks here in Hawaiian Islands. How many of you love sharks? Who loves sharks out there? Can I see hands? Yeah, shark lovers. Yeah. I see so many shark lovers. So we're so lucky to be here with so many shark lovers today. And I can't wait to tell you more about what we've been up to. Yeah, so um, I am down here now in the ROV hangar, where we stage our Bruv's equipment. Um, and we have two different types of uh, bruv equipment that we use because we study the sharks at different depths. So we study the sharks from about two meters to 30 meters using um, this shallow rig. So as you can see here, it is just galvanized frame um, that has legs that sit on the bottom of the sea floor. And inside this enclosure tube is where we stick uh, a camera, a GoPro camera. And we attach um, a baited arm, so a uh, arm that has bait attached to it. This nice smelly bag of uh, 
bait fish that consist of scraps of leftover fish scraps um, from factories um, and fish markets will attach to this canister here to attract the sharks. And what we want to try to understand is the sharks that come into in front of the camera um, to see their diversity, to see what kinds of sharks you know, are inquisitive and what kinds of sharks are attracted to fish, um, as well as how many of the different species of sharks we're able to document and quantify. And all of this gives us a little bit of information about how healthy the reef ecosystem is or how healthy the marine environment of those areas that we deploy these rigs. This rig right here is one of our deep rig. Um, it is heavier uh, because it sits at 200 meters maximum depth. So we have lights here attached to the rig um, because at 200 meters deep, there is very, very minimal ambient light or surface light that penetrates um, to that depth. So we have these um, lights to be able to illuminate what is in front of us. So we are able to capture um, the different species, whether that be sharks or fish or other invertebrates that swim and pass through the camera. So we're hoping to find um, what kind of species are at the different depths of the Hawaiian islands, um, how abundant they are, and sort of their behavior as well. So how do they interact with each other? How do they interact with their environment? Because all of this can help us understand the marine ecosystem better to be able to protect it um, and inform different management um, and policies to help conserve the beloved sharks. So one way after we retrieve the footage from our GoPros is to process it through an artificial intelligence tool, um, which Sarah here will be able to share in a bit, um, because obviously time is money and in order to more effectively um, be able to find out the different species, it would be very, very useful if you can have an algorithm um, identify the different shark species. So I'll hand it over to Sarah to be able to explain how we use the AI processing tool to process our video footage of the sharks that we're able to collect using these rigs. So I'll see you back. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sarah Khalid. Um, I'm a researcher at the University of Oxford and I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Give me a shout out if you can hear me loud and clear. We can well, hear good. you, Sarah, but you, uh, your presentation should go into uh, presentation mode so we can see it nice and big. How about now? I was still seeing a presenter view on your end. There we go, perfect. Okay, awesome, right. Thank you very much, Gina. Um, so um, Ariana has just been telling us about browse um, and I'm here to tell us a little bit about a, a different kind of technology that we've been also using in this expedition to do with artificial intelligence. And my background is in engineering. And nowadays, um, we, we, as in engineering, have to use uh, a lot of artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence, when I first heard about it, reminded me uh, of things like robots. But in fact, if um, you believe it or not, uh, artificial intelligence is a computer modeling technology that was designed so that computers can be as clever um, or even better than human brains at understanding patterns and making decisions. Um, and how computers are able to do this is because they see everything, everything as numbers, basically. So zeros and ones. So even so, even you and me, if you if, if a computer sees us uh, it, virtually, um, they would assign numbers to us. And this ability gives them uh, the the power to detect patterns that sometimes we even cannot see with our naked eye. So the the idea behind artificial intelligence is to help human beings recognize patterns uh, that we can't easily detect by ourselves and to be able to make decisions based on that. Um, and the cool thing about this is that artificial intelligence is something that can be done anywhere in the world, essentially, as long as you have a, a computer, like, you know, in this picture, you can see me in my lab um, and we're basically being able to run some artificial intelligence on footage from sharks that we've uh, gathered from this expedition. Um, 
here in Oxford, but you could equally be doing and running this tool um, anywhere where you are based. And so in a way, this is being um, this is like being an explorer and making discoveries, except that um, it's with data this time, and that it's the computer model that is doing the digging and the hard work and the pattern recognition. So um, all of this got us thinking, how can we use something like artificial intelligence to help with this, um, this um, problem that we have with shark conservation, which is also probably something that you were wondering here as well. Um, so basically, um, if you can see what I'm seeing in front of me, which is a shark floating out of the deep dark background and move right across the screen in front of us, then so is the artificial intelligence model able to see the same thing as I was speaking. And in fact, it was processing this footage. So um, having processed the footage um, and run it through the computer model, uh, the artificial intelligence tool generate some sort of prediction about what it thinks, uh, which type of shark we're looking at. And it's able to do this because it's been seeing um, lots and lots of images and videos of similar shark. And based on that, it's able to make a call between you know, what it thinks, uh, is this even a shark or is it part of the reef? Uh, if it is a shark, what type of shark it is? And so in this case, we see that it tells us that it thinks up to 93% accuracy that this may be a tiger shark. Um, and so um, the one we looked at before was definitely a tiger shark, I can tell you that. Uh, but how about this one? Um, the one that you can see on the screen now, it, it, to me, it looks like a tiger shark, but what do you think? Um, which one do you think this may be? Do you think this is a bull shark or is it a tiger shark, such as the one we saw before? Or is it a hammerhead shark, for example? I know there are some, we have some shark enthusiasts um, in, in the room today. So, so make your guesses, and as you're making your guesses, so is the artificial intelligence tool that is running on in the background, um, believe it or not. And it, it has, I can tell you, already decided that this is definitely a shark that we're looking at. It's not, for example, a box or a flower or uh, algae in the water. Shall I go ahead and review? So, if you thought this was a bull shark and not a tiger shark this time, you were right. Um, and that's actually what the artificial intelligence tool also thinks. So what we're looking at now is this dashboard or front end, uh, which was developed in, to, to give, um, this is the front end of the artificial intelligence model because um, the, the actual model itself is a bunch of code uh, that is run inside something like a software called Python or R. Um, and, um, this is a, a front end that we developed for it. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, it looks like we have another shark. Any guesses for this one? No. Turns out this one is just Iman. Do you want to wave to everyone, Iman? Okay, that's all for me. Um, I'm going to pass on to Kelly next, who will be telling us all about another type of technology called eDNA. Yes. Hi, everyone. And thank you, Sara. Um, I'm Kelly Kohler and an educator on the team. I also helped organize the eDNA research on our expedition and the collecting and filtering of water samples on the first leg of the expedition. So I'm going to give us an overview of this awesome other technology that we've been using to help um, determine how many sharks and what types of sharks are in the areas around Hawaii and Maui. Um, so eDNA or environmental DNA is the genetic material left in the water by organisms. So we all shed cells as we move through spaces because we're living things and our bodies are constantly growing new cells. In the water, particles of mucus, waste, and tissue are left by organisms. So the DNA found in the environment is called eDNA or environmental DNA, and it can linger in the water for various lengths of time up to about three weeks. And what we're hoping to see by taking water samples and analyzing them for eDNA is any presence of sharks. Uh, pictured here is a tool called a Niskin bottle that we use to sample water. So we send this off the side of the um, boat that we're on, and we're able to trigger it at certain depths so we can actually control what depth in the water we're taking a sample from. 
One of the really interesting things about what we're doing is sampling water at the same places that we're putting the bruvs. So if we see a shark with the bruv, hopefully we'll also find some DNA because of the way the various like water um, circulates um, in the ocean though, we also might not see it, but um, we're, we're hoping to be able to see um, with the DNA evidence of what we also see with the bruvs. We're also, we also might pick up evidence of sharks though with eDNA that we don't see um, with the bruvs. So um, once it comes back um, to the uh, wet lab at the Nautilus, we filter the water samples um, in a method pictured here. And I think that Daniel is going to be talking a little bit more about that as well. Um, after the samples are all processed, we send them off to a lab. So we don't actually know. We've collected a bunch of samples on the expedition so far, but we don't yet know what we found until they're fully processed by a lab at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. All right, and I think we're ready to um, hand it over to Dan maybe next. I see him ready. I'm yeah, aloha. I'm, I'm happy to take it over from down here in the wet lab on board Nautilus. Aloha, everyone. It's great to be here. Um, just so you know, here is a beautiful sample containing some DNA, some eDNA, and I've labeled it with the Explore Classroom. So this was Kelly's idea. She gave me this great idea so that now we have our Explore Classroom sample and hopefully we can reconnect with you all to let you know what we found um, in your sample, hopefully even some shark DNA in there. So I just wanted to be able to kind of show you the space where we're processing those water samples for eDNA. Um, this is our workspace for that onboard Nautilus. It's so cool to be on a ship with so many resources. Yeah, so much technology, so many tools to be able to do science out here in the field. Um, but science can be a messy process. And so out here in Hawaii, we recognize this is my home. This is where I live. And we recognize that there have been people in these islands caring for these islands for hundreds of years. The Hawaiian people um, have stewarded relationships with sharks, with coral, with limu, with the fish, and also on land running all through what we call the aina, um, that which feeds us. So extending all the way from the tops of the mountains, uh, all the way out to the deep, deep ocean where Nautilus does her exploration. Hawaiians have been caring for and studying and doing their own science in those places for a long time. So we're building on that. But science doesn't always go as planned in a place that's as dynamic as the ocean. And so we've had our own challenges and problems in doing our research. And early on in the trip, we even lost one of our bruvs. One of our little brothers escaped and we lost it, or so we thought. It was really incredible. Actually, as soon as we were able to release the fact that we were also disappointed uh, that we had lost one of our bruvs, the bruv came back to us in the form of Kanaloa, the Hawaiian god of the ocean who can take many forms. And what you're looking at now is the largest fish, the largest shark in the sea that many of us dream of seeing showed up right next to our boat. So without the bruv, just as a gift from the ocean, Kanaloa, this beautiful whale shark, swam right up to our boat and swam right past us. Look how close we got. Look at those beautiful spots. And Ariana, our lead scientist, she studies whale sharks in the Philippines. So she had that mana, that energy, that spirit that helped connect us to the whale shark. So, so beautiful um, for her to be able to see a familiar friend um, and for us to be so close to this majestic creature. The ocean is really a magical place. It's not just for science, but also for magic. And so that's been a great part of our research here. And so fun to bring people from all over the world together to experience both that science and that magic. So aloha, everyone. We're so thankful you joined us in Hawaii today out in the ocean with Nautilus. And I'm going to pass it over to Jenny Berglund to tell you about the cool storytelling work she's been doing as part of our team. Take it away, Jenny. Jenny, I don't think we're able to hear you. I'm not getting anything in, on your microphone. 
Oh, my fault. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I forgot to turn my volume on. I was just saying it is so nice to see all these amazing faces here. Um, wow, what an exciting experience this is. Um, so I'm very grateful for uh, to Daniel for telling that story about the whale shark, because, you know, when I was about your age, my favorite animal was a whale shark. And I, that's all I wanted to see. It was the first wild animal I ever wanted to see. And I hadn't seen one until the other day. And so it was just the most exciting thing to see in the world. I'm so grateful to be an explorer and a storyteller and to have been here um, to see that. So my job, I might argue, is probably the most fun because I get to follow around really smart, amazing scientists and tell the stories of their work. And so my job is to document what they're doing and to create media um, to share it with the world, to share it with you all. So um, here are just a few little teaser images from, um, from the experience so far. Um, this is, uh, you know, part of my job is um, not just to tell stories about, um, about the work, but also to help out with the science. Um, so part of our work is documenting um, the uh, the type of environment that we're dropping our bruvs into our baited remote underwater um, video rigs, um, and so here are just a few images um, documenting um, you know the substrate on which we we put these these uh, these bruvs. Hopefully we land in the sand, but nearby um, it's just this beautiful reef, and um, so. What I do is I take my, my underwater camera and I dive down into the ocean and I take pictures and videos of what we see. So here are some examples of, um, of what we're seeing. Um, and this is my favorite. I made a new friend the other day. It's a giant, is this a giant Pacific opt octopus? Well, let's just say it's an octopus. <laughs> and uh, the octopus and I got to hang out the other day um, and it crawled out of its hole. Octopi usually like to hide in the coral reefs and you'll see, you know, like a little eye poking out of the reef or um, maybe a little tentacle. But this one came out to hang out with me. Um, so here you see it got up on the top of the rock there. Um, or not the rock of the uh, the coral there, and it just sort of checked me out. But it's amazing because it um, it's able to blend in with its environment. You can see it changes its colors so it matches its environment. So unless you you know know it's there, it looks just like the coral reef. Isn't that amazing? Who loves octopi? Raise your hand. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Has anyone out there seen my octopus teacher? The movie my octopus teacher yeah me too um octopi are just my favorite so getting to make a new friend the other day was you know probably the highlight of of the cruise aside from seeing the whale shark of course um and aside from hanging out with my wonderful team um so are there any others there but a lot of my work is going to happen after the cruise um, because I'll get to process all my media and turn it into, um, into a video about the work my wonderful team has done. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but let's, uh, uh, I think let's, let's bring it to questions. Yeah, let's Follow open it up for yeah. questions. Wow, thank you so much, Ariana, Daniel, Jenny, Kelly, and Sarah for being here with us today and sharing your incredible work and why studying and conserving sharks is so important. You know, I bet many of our viewers are interested in joining your mission, no matter where we are in the world. Do you have any general advice for how we might be able to contribute? So I would say that um, even if you're not by the ocean, even if you uh, never see the ocean, you're always connected to the ocean in some way or form. Um, and what you do uh, in your daily lives affects the ocean and affects our environment. So just being conscious about um, your daily choices, whether that's you know the food that you eat, whether that's how you get to school, whether that's how you interact with um, your friends and your community, all of that impacts our environment um, and the health of our ocean. So, you know, being mindful of um, 
what you buy, what you ask your parents to buy, the, all the yummy snacks and stuff, um, you know, buying from the local markets. Um, that's all very important. And if you're very interested to help ocean conservation, definitely do, you know, your research, um, read about it, reach out to people, to your teachers, to your friends um, that, you know, work in that area um, and just learn. Have a curious and open mind and keep on learning about things so that you're aware of how you can help as well. That oh, would be my advice. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'll throw mine out there. Keep asking to go play outside. Keep asking. Don't even when they say, no, no, we got, we're busy. We're busy. Say, no, but I need to go play outside and, and keep going outside and enjoying nature wherever you are. Um, enjoying being in the outdoors and exploring. Um, of course, we can do exploration inside too on the computers and doing research, but connecting with the outdoors is so, so important. So I hope all of you um, are asking for that time and taking that time, spending it with friends and family. Uh, so yeah, get outside and, and have some fun. Yeah, and just to piggyback on that, I would say the most important thing is to stay curious and to ask questions, to go out into the outdoors, find something you're curious about, um, could be a little bug, could be a plant or an Love animal, bugs. and ask all the questions you can about it. And maybe there aren't answers yet. And that's, that's even more exciting because that means that you can look for answers yourself. So stay curious. I'd love to hear from Kelly and Sarah as well. What's your advice? Oh, my advice, I would love to give Sarah's AI tool a shout out, especially because I used it with students just yesterday here at Bayview Middle School. And um, anyone can help um, with the AI tool by feeding it images of sharks from the internet. Internet. So even if you live in a place like me that you can't go out and take a photo of a shark, um, you can help by um, going onto the Shark Pulse website. Totally, yeah. Help to make the AI more smart um, and, and help us in turn. And I think just, just adding to what everyone has said, um, but by saying actually artificial intelligence is the easy part. So, so, so doing AI or running an AI code um, in, in the lab is the easy bit. The um, actually getting out there and drawing inspiration and talking to people and you know connecting with nature and looking for the problems you want to solve with something like artificial intelligence, for example, that's the real challenge and that's the that's where um, you should also be spending some time, as Daniel said. I was waiting for your lead. I'll I'll join in. <laughs> well. I wanted to thank you again, Shark Team and the rest of the Ocean Exploration Trust Team on the Nautilus for taking the time out of your busy expedition schedule to be with us today. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so Yay. much for tuning in. It was so fun. You all are the thank best. You. Thank you so much. Keep exploring, keep being shark lovers and go play outside. Stay curious. <laughs> Thank you so much. And a big thank you to all the students and teachers who are watching. We hope you join many more of our events. Join us next Wednesday, same time, October 12th, for the third event in this special series live from the Nautilus. Next week, we'll be joined by the microplastics team led by National Geographic Explorer, Rachel Miller. We're going to learn all about their work mapping microplastics and microfibers in the water using different techniques from marine and forensic science. Very cool. So teachers, remember to register for more than one event in this series for a chance to win a special prize for your classroom. And next Thursday, we'll be joined by explorer Enrique Lomnitz, who is an industrial designer who focuses on water access and sustainability. So register for these events and more at natgeoed.org slash explorer classroom. You can request a chance to be featured on screen with us during the registration process. And fellow teachers, we've also created a new interactive guide for you to share with your students to take them on a learning journey with each of our special guests. You can find the Explorer Mindset in Action Guide and the Teacher Edition linked on each registration page for each event. And we're also putting that in the chat for you now so that you have access to it. We hope you have a great day, everyone. Stay curious and thank you for joining us today.